thank you very much. Um, hello to everyone here and online. I'm going to start off a bit different because I'm going to ask you what this is. Mm. Mm. Yeah, a cable. Um, in this case, it's an HDMI, but that's not relevant. Um, what's, <laughs> what's important is that this is a very useful object that we use every day in our lives to connect, to learn, to work. And um, during that long time we've all been in, it's been our daily tool. We used it every day to keep working and keep being connected. And our young learners are doing the same. They're spending a lot of time online, playing, learning, <laughs> connecting with their friends. And that's all fine and well. But we also have to look at um, their time spent outside, what they do outside, how they spend their time outside. And finding a balance in this. And that is what um, our chosen picture book was about, but also what our kid involved into, finding the balance between offline and online time. Oh, okay. Our kid was created um, with our mentor, Carmen, who then over time changed into Sandy, but we always stayed in contact. Then we had Iris from the Netherlands, Christina from Italy, who um, also put the kid into action at a school. Then Sandra from Portugal, who did the same, Sandra. who couldn't be here today, but we she's try to, us. yeah, she's with us in our hearts. <laughs> and we try to include some of her experiences and myself as a student teacher. So our book was uh, written by Steve Anthony and it was published in 2017 by Hodder Children's Books. And something we really liked about this was that the paratext also included elements of the story, like for example, the font of the um, title is also written in a cable, which inspired us as well. Um, the book was dedicated to Aiden, Annie, and Ellie. And another nice um, addition is that Blip, our main character, is connected to the author by a little cable. So she's plugged into a creator. And so our story goes that Blip lives in a house and there she is connected to her computer all the time, plugged in, and there she visits faraway places online and learns and meets friends. And everything is done there, and it's shown in this great gray, black, and white scheme. And you can see that the, um, the screen is pixelated. Every pixel was drawn by hand, <laughs> just as a little addition to know. Um, and then at one point, there was a power cut and Blip is disconnected from a computer, suddenly unplugged, and then thrown into the outside, which looks like this. So it's a very, very different world, and Blip is very lost at first and doesn't really know where she is and what to do, and then she finds friends, and she learns that all the activities she did online, she can do outside with her new friends, and they're just as much fun. And at one point, Blip goes back to her house, goes back up the stairs, and notices that the online time was nice, but the outside as well. So she decides to go back out at some point and meet her friends again, and live in a balance between the online and offline world. And with that, um, we decided that, I'm just gonna go back. Um, we, we wanted to base our kid on this, to help the children find a balance between online and offline activities, explore new activities outside, especially after this long time they had to spend um, online due to events we all know about. And also knowing that being plugged in can be a great thing to also meet new friends online via e-twinning, an activity we also incorporated into our kid. And with that, I will hand over to Christina. Okay, so here we are. We, we decided deliberately to go directly to the highlights of our jobs done in classroom. And in fact, we discover and we measure, we gave evidence of the hours students were online. I came from a tiny school close to the Swiss border. We work in a multi-class, so class five and class one are together. They work together. So working through e twinning and working and knowing the Portuguese partner was really a great experience children were eager to live in. 
So they measure, as we say, for one week from the 20th of February to the 26th of February. And then they compare, they talk about, oh, how long have you been plugged? Oh, I'm, I was longer than you, etc. So they talk and then discuss a, a lot in the plenary session about all those things. Here you've got a picture of the two calls we had. We had one in which we read together, teachers, the book. And this is the picture actually of the second one where the children read together the picture book. They also were able to share what they learned through our long and beautiful journey. So to visit faraway places when the way were unplugged, to play outside, to stay outside. Students say, I love the project, I felt very inspired. I felt happy and excited. I felt interested and important because we explained the fact that we, we were such a big international group with teachers, with students, scholars involved in all those magnificent projects. So uh, they felt great and they also felt curious. Uh, on your left, you can see a beautiful picture of a game that uh, Portuguese students taught us. Because in the second call, not only they read the books uh, and dis share the discoveries, but uh, and also discussed about our production, you will see it one second, but they also let them play each other's. Because in fact, in our discovery phases, we decided to connect ourselves and thinking about what games, what traditional games we used to have. So students prepare an interview about parents, and they, they ask it to parents and to grandparents to rediscover the traditional games of the two different nationalities. And here we are. Sandra, at the beginning of April, was able to involve students, family, and the whole school staff to demonstrate and teaching to Portuguese teacher children these uh, traditional games. And they play through the whole day, uh, as uh, you, know, you can see. As I already say, we decided, we deliberately decided to create a cooperative digital book on traditional games. We shared with the families through Google Classroom. We published online, it's a story jumper the, uh, pu publication. And you can see a few pictures of that. There's a QR code if you just point with your camera, maybe you will be able to, to see the, some pages. And then we printed out and then we gave it to people in the community, to the mayor, and then to our headmistress, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, they also decided to collaborate in the creation of a tier of poster. And again, they work it together using Canva. And uh, at the end of the experience, we shared in the community, uh, as you can see. We also hang it in bulletin boards in our little village. Here are the reflecting and reviewing uh, drawing. You can see they are so nice, colorful, and apparently they, they learned a lesson. <laughs> the model is outstanding, as you probably realize. So it's three-dimensional, holistic idea, not only heart and brain, but also hand, which is what we want to develop through this project, you know, digitally, but also physically. Yes, and that brings us to a quote we chose, um, and it says, we do not learn from experience, we learn from reflecting on experience. And that goes for all of the people in the project, for one blip in the story, who notices that inside is great, but outside as well. Um, so she notices that outside, or more, the online and the offline, both bring her fun and are good tools, but she has to find her balance. That also goes for the children, with the outside activities and their reflection on their time spent online and maybe thinking and reflecting on how they would now create their schedule and how much time they want to spend online and how much time they would rather spend offline with their friends outside. But also for us it's teachers um, reflecting on our materials on the project and the kit and bringing that into action and seeing how it plays out with the children and how we move them into creating a new play environment for themselves and incorporating these games into their everyday lives. So moving on to reflections, for myself, um, I got a lot of guidance on how to creating teaching materials and how to 
go just beyond one lesson. As a student teacher, we always just plan for very small units of teaching we get in um, some kind of school where we can work. So this for me was very interesting to go beyond that and to have a, um, a long time plan for school sessions that go just beyond 45 minutes. Also experiencing the European citizenship for myself with the interactions with the other teachers, but also in the children, um, seeing how they get excited with seeing their peers from other countries and realizing that they in Italy learn English as their second language, but also in Portugal, and they're in the same place and share that. And also for me, learning from um, the experiences of my fellow teachers and what they have worked through and their teaching materials and seeing what works and doesn't work really helped me. So the impact on my children, they were more engaged. The sharing of the tear of poster in the village for me was one of the most emotional time because the, sh the science student was confident and she was bold. And they had good outstanding performance in the Trinity GC exam and in Vasi exam. So if we want to give, if we want to give evidence of the content as well as, as yesterday we mentioned. Uh, the impact on me, I am more confident about using picture book, especially the meta language, the great analysis we went through, so it, it helps a lot. During the take action, I try to improve my communication skills, to act outside in the village, and to give evidence of what we do into the classroom. And of course, last but not least, to stay more unplugged. <laughs> I can talk for our dear friend Sandra too. So she, the impact on the children, they identify and reflect a lot with Bleep, with, the, with our friend Bleep. They understand the value of offline time. They also, this is interesting, they also interact in a more peaceful way with the peers after all the sharing and all the playing outside in the playground. The impact for her was to go behind the book. So the book we learned, and we repeated yesterday, is just, we are mediators, so the book is just one, one tool we can use, and then act as an agent of change, influence in shaping children's world we view. So it's the time, is it your, no it's mine, is the time you spend on your roles that makes your roles so important. So we work hard, we, we stay together for a long time, we grow up interculturally, etc. and we invite you to look at, the, at the, all the 18 wonderful kids. We dedicated on purpose one slide to acknowledge all the greatest. So a big, a huge uh, thank you to Sandy, to Silvano Rampone from Italy, to Carmen, our super duper mentor, and everyone involved in the project. I can say thank you to Anita Sadowska too. She's one of the four magnificent lady from Petfel where we learn so, <laughs> such a lot about picture books. Yes, 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 yes. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you very you much <laughs> for your presentation and there are some questions coming in. First one is, what did the children put on the tear off posters? Okay, I'm going to read it. Sorry, maybe you couldn't see. So they say, get some sunshine, stay outside, go for a walk, relax please, play with your kids, stay with your family, meet your friends, read a book. So please take one piece. They are outside on the desk, registration desk, if you want to get one of those. How did the different age groups respond to the activities, Christina? Mm, it was, I just involved class five, actually. Class one was there as sort of looking and seeing what happens, just to let them be, you know, uh, European spirit, you know, <laughs> and then get them involved in a future for other projects. But I work it and we produce all the materials all with class five because I need to give them, you know, a little bit more challenging, a little bit more, you know, to get them being involved. Yeah, thank you very much. Is there another question? Caroline, what are you planning to do now? How will you further develop what you've learned? 
<laughs> yeah, that's uh, actually a very okay. good question, I think. This yeah. is a, going to be a bit of an outing because I started to become, uh, I, I started my career to become a teacher, but over this project and also others, I discovered that I see my future in developing teachers' materials and school books. So I changed my studies and I'm going to um, go into picture book, no, no, not picture book creation, maybe later, but teaching material creation and moving into that direction to create resources for teachers. Um, also on a digital focus, because that's something that we could also work on to have digital resources for teachers. So this project um, had a life-changing impact actually yes. on you, <laughs> so very well. In what ways were the students involved in creating the digital book? Did they write the text for it as well? Absolutely, yes, they wrote the text. We decided to talk about, you know, certain things such as number of players involved, if you play outside, if you play inside, and then a little bit of um, blah, 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 number of players. Uh, materials, game goal, and then game description and rules. So these were the, 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 the tasks they had to write for. So they, they, ask, they ask parents and grandparents about traditional games in Italian. They, translate, they wrote it in Italian and then they translated it in English. The same for the Portuguese friends. Yeah, and it was a multilingual book in the Absolutely. end, right? Yes, okay, course. thank you. Thank you. And when we tested the ice kids on how to be a lion picture book, one of the most difficult challenges for children was the HHH, the hand, heart, yeah. and head moment. How was your experience? Children were great, as uh, we say, because it was just natural. After all those reflections we, we went through, it was something very, very, very natural for them. And, of course, uh, this is a model for them, too, you know, just do and then reflect because we learn through reflecting yes. too. And the person who asked this question, Sandra, Sa Sandra Guarda, sends her hugs. I, oh, I shouldn't miss that. Me too. Um, <laughs> what led you to choose the particular ice kit for your classes? Or well, actually to choose the book maybe. Mm, yes. That's interesting because at the, in the beginning there was another book. We decided for another book, you remember? Yeah, I, and then I remember. We changed process. our mind and, you know, we tried to do our best to involve students. As we learn, picture books, you can involve students, or not only students, but people from zero to 99 years old. So, you know, it just depends on what you want to develop through it. It's the journey you want to build. Yes, and there was a lot of intercultural negotiation going on in this uh, choice of picture book um, as yes. we, I was mentoring this group, and that was a very important process as well to bring in the different backgrounds and also the feasibility to put it to practice. What was um, the age range mm -hmm. of your groups, probably? Okay, so for Sandra was class four, and for me was class five, so nine, ten, and eight, nine, I would say. The older, young yes, learners. Exactly. Do you feel more plugged or unplugged? <laughs> <Here we go now. laughs> I think I found my balance, as in, <laughs> as in appreciating both. Um, both has its good sides and bad sides. I mean, on the one side, with being plugged in, we are able to have this hybrid conference with um, the technology and and being able to connect all over the globe, also being able to use e-twinning and have the children interact with each other. But I also see it as a very important um, thing to just go outside and make experiences for yourself and see things and then also share them with your friends, be it virtually or in person. That's, I think that's the, the key of balance between it. And I think I want to add this, the, those two participants became friends for a lifetime, Please, and Sandra I think... Sandra too, Sandra too, we are the and, three uh, of yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yes. Sandra as well, Sandra sorry, um, sorry. Um, and I think that is also important about um, Erasmus yes. projects and this idea about having a European project. Thank you. <laughs>